It's Wednesday in the fifth week following the Festival of Pentecost, July the 8th, 2020. Good to be with you for our daily devotion. We uh, continue on Wednesdays to learn from Luther's small catechism. And uh, specifically, we're moving into the tail end of the catechism where you find the table of duties. Now, it may not be an item that everyone is terribly familiar with, but I will tell you that this is uh, in many ways one of the most practical parts of the entire catechism, although the whole of of the catechism is practical because the Word of God is itself practical, uh, speaking to us about uh, what he has done for us and also then what we're called upon to do. But the table of duties really helps get into the everyday life of the Christian. In fact, the table of duties is described this way in the Catechism, that this is certain passages of Scripture for various holy orders and positions, admonishing them about their duties and responsibilities. Now, a couple of things to take note of there. First of all, these uh, it is not a slight thing to call these various holy orders and positions. At the time of the Reformation, a holy order was all about um, taking an oath of celibacy, entering into a monastery, becoming a monk or a nun, and then maybe even taking a vow of poverty and on down the line. And the teaching of the church at the day, of the day was that these are truly holy orders. And when you do this, now you are living a life that is more pleasing and uh, worthy of God. But what the reformers recognized was that scripture never speaks about such holy orders, about taking monastic vows and down the line. And so uh, what the reformers sought to do, and now you find it right here in the small catechism with the table of duties, is to say, well, let's look at what scripture actually says are holy orders. Who has God called you to be? And this is how you go about living a life that is pleasing to God. You don't have to take a monastic vow, but instead just live out who God has called you you to be. Now, you can have any number of examples of that. Uh, You can do that, and you can follow this in the table of duties, is that you can do it as um, pastor or parishioner. You can do it as husband or wife. You can do it as um, citizen or ruler. You can do it as employer or employee, parent, child, all right. And notice there's always this tandem because the table of duties recognizes that God has put us into these relationships. And part of that relationship, as it says right here, is about your duties and responsibilities. God puts you into this position and now you have a duty and a responsibility to others based upon it. I can think of myself as husband. I have a duty and a responsibility to my wife. As a father, I have duty and and responsibility towards my children. As a son, I have a duty and a responsibility toward my parents. As a pastor, duty and responsibility towards my congregation. As a citizen, duty and responsibility towards the state of Missouri and the United States down the line. And you can continue to do this with all those relationships that Christ has put you in. But duties and responsibilities, that's really to recognize there is, if you will, law that is present here, that God calls you to do certain things for the sake of others. But there's a flip side to this. You have duty and responsibility towards others, but then also you're the recipient of what they are called to do by Christ for you. So you can think about the blessings that are delivered by Christ through others. So as husband, it's not just about my duties and responsibilities toward my wife. Think about the riches I have because of my wife. There is Christ being gracious to me with what he delivers me to me through my wife. Same thing, the many blessings I receive through my children, the blessings I have received my entire life through my parents, uh, the blessings I receive through this congregation, the blessings I even have through the government because of the order that is established, etc. And again, you can do this with all the relationships. So it's about the law that says what I am to do for them, but it's also about the gospel, about what they are delivering to me on behalf of Christ.
Now, let's look at something specific. Now, you can look at all those different relationships, but what is true about you in all your relationships? Well, this is what you get at the tail end of the table of duties. You've had all these scripture passages setting forth uh, duties and responsibilities in our various callings, but here is what applies to every calling you have, every place in life, every relationship you have. And this is taken right from Romans chapter 13. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's what the table of duties is all about. Loving your neighbor as yourself. And how do you love your neighbor as yourself? Well, look at the positions God has put you in. How do you be the best husband that you can be? How do you go about being the best son or daughter? How do you go about being the best child or parent? How do you go about being the best employee or employer and on down the line so that you love your neighbor as yourself when you are thinking not about what you desire or what best serves you, but how you can best serve others? And then you're being Christ to them, and it opens your eyes to see how Christ uses others so that they are Christ for you by delivering his blessings. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the blessed orders that you establish in this life and how you set us in relationship to one another. So grant us steadfastness and responsibility so that we might live out our calling towards others and then also rejoice as we see your blessings being delivered to us through their hands as well. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.